Okay, Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. So, ini adalah the first video for the second chapter iaitu thermochemistry. Okay, so kita akan belajar chapter 2.1, concept of enthalpy. So, kita tengok apa learning outcome yang kita kena belajar. Okay, so the first learning outcome adalah you should be able to explain the endothermic and exothermic reaction using complete energy profile diagram. So, somehow, the first linear outcome here, saya dah cover sikit dekat chapter 1. Okay, kita dah tahu how to draw energy profile diagram for endothermic and exothermic. But, saya nak explore lagi what is endothermic, what is exothermic dalam chapter 2 ni. Okay, and then next one, you should be able to state standard condition of reaction and define the following terms. Okay, enthalpy and standard enthalpy. So, kena boleh define lah these two terms. And then, uh, learning outcome yang ketiga, okay, define and write thermochemical equation ni, I will continue in the next video because this one is quite long to explain. Okay, so let us start with the introduction. Okay, so thermochemistry, okay, the title of our chapter 2, okay, thermochemistry is the study of energy change changes which take place during a chemical reaction. Okay, so the word thermo is heat. Okay, so kita nak kita nak study lah apa energy changes yang berlaku dalam chemical reaction. Okay, sama ada heat absorb ataupun heat release. Sebab sini dia kata almost all chemical reaction are accompanied by absorbing or releasing heat. Yeah, okay, so sama, cuma kita tak, kita mungkin kita tahu ataupun mungkin kita tak tahu. Some, uh, most of the reaction ada involve absorb heat ataupun release heat. So, kita akan tengok lah. Alright, and then uh, when a reaction takes place, the heat content of a system will change. Yes, sebab we know that heat is is a form of energy and energy cannot be destroyed. Okay, so what we can do adalah dia boleh transfer. Okay, so, uh, so heat content of a system will change because maybe the heat from the system can be transferred to the surrounding. Or heat from the surrounding is transferred to the system. Okay, so now I'm using the word system and surrounding. I know it might sound confusing. Tapi nanti kita akan belajar detail lah. Okay, what is system? What is surrounding? But for now, you can understand it macam uh, kalau kamu bakar something, bakar kayu lah katakan. So, bila kamu bakar tu, pembakaran tu adalah sistem. While the surrounding adalah environment tu lah. Okay. So, itu contoh. Heat a system and surrounding. And then that's why the heat content of system is known as enthalpy of the system. Okay. So, kita dah jumpa perkataan enthalpy. Enthalpy the symbol is H. Okay. So, enthalpy ni apa? Enthalpy ni adalah heat content of a system. Okay. So, next let us move to enthalpy. So, the definition of enthalpy is the same as above. Enthalpy is the heat content of a system or total energy in the system. Okay, and the unit for enthalpy, since enthalpy is related to energy, that's mean the unit is joule. Okay, the total enthalpy H of a system cannot be measured directly. Okay, kita tak boleh nak ukur enthalpy yang berada dalam chemical reaction tu, kita tak boleh. That's why instead of measuring enthalpy to directly, kita tend to measure change in enthalpy delta H. Delta ni change lah kan segitiga ni. Okay, so thus change in enthalpy is more useful quantity than its absolute value. So, kita ukur perubahan enthalpy tu instead of enthalpy dalam benda tu sebab it's complicated. Okay. So, the change in enthalpy is also known as heat of reaction. Okay, so kadang-kadang delta H also known as heat of reaction. So, benda yang samalah ni term dia. Okay, so heat of reaction equal to enthalpy change. Ini uh, emphasize the last point here lah. Maksudnya, dua benda ni adalah benda yang sama je. Okay, and then how to calculate delta H ataupun change in enthalpy ni. Uh, ini kita dah go through dalam chapter 1. Okay, summation of enthalpy product minus summation of enthalpy return. Okay, so that is how we calculate delta H. Okay, so the technique used to measure the enthalpy reaction delta H is called 
calorimetry. So macam mana kita nak ukur delta H? Okey, kita akan guna teknik calorimetry yang menggunakan calorimeter. Okey. Alright, and then next one, standard enthalpy. Okay, so kalau ikut learning outcome tadi, you should understand what is enthalpy. And then the next thing is standard enthalpy. Actually, enthalpy and standard enthalpy sama lah. Cuma dia ada the word standard here. Okay, so standard enthalpy of reaction, delta H naught. Okay, so kamu boleh tengok eh, dekat sini. Beza dia, ini standard enthalpy. Okay, dia ada delta H naught. Kalau enthalpy biasa, okay, uh, saya akan letak delta H sahaja. Okay. Kalau change in enthalpy, kita letak delta H without the not here. So, if you see not ni bulat kecil ni, ni maksudnya dia adalah standard at standard condition. Okay, so delta H not is the enthalpy change for a particular reaction that occur at standard condition. So, bila ada not, maksudnya reaction tu dilakukan dalam keadaan. Standard. Keadaan standard tu apa? Okay. So, standard condition adalah when the temperature is 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius, when the pressure is 1 atm ataupun 101 kilopascal ataupun the solution with concentration of 1 molar. So, if the experiment, if the experiment is carried out at this condition, so we call it as standard condition. Okay. Next, so let us move to the definition of system and surrounding. So, ini tadi saya dah cakap, uh, saya dah explain briefly what is system, what is surrounding. So, but now you have to really understand this, okay, system and surrounding so that you can understand what I'm trying to say next dekat endothermic and exothermic. Okay, so the measurement of heat transfer require the definition of system and surrounding. Yes, that is what I'm trying to say now. Okay, I'm trying to explain to you heat transfer tu dari sistem pergi surrounding, dari surrounding pergi sistem. So, nak faham yang tu, kena faham dulu sistem and surrounding. So, sistem, what is sistem? Sistem is the substance undergoing the chemical and physical changes. Okay, so maksudnya, kalau kamu tengah buat neutralization reaction, HCl mix dengan uh, NaOH. Okay, so reaction between HCl and NaOH, that is what we call system lah. Okay, reaction tu. Reaction tu adalah system. Ataupun kamu buat pembakaran, combustion. Okay, kamu buat pembakaran, kamu bakar sampah. So, kamu bakar tu, pembakaran tu, itu adalah system. Okay, sebab apa? Sebab dia, substance tu undergoing chemical and physical changes. Okay, so macam HCl dengan NaOH, dia tak akan jadi HCl dan NaOH dah. Dia akan jadi NaCl and H2O. So, that's mean it undergo chemical changes. Okay, while for combustion, kamu bakar kayu api. Dan kayu api tu tak akan jadi kayu dah lah. Okay, dia akan jadi uh, ash and dia akan produce smoke. Okay, alright. And then next one, surrounding. Okay, so what is surrounding? Surrounding ni, surrounding lah. Okay, macam mana kita faham kataan surrounding? So, kena surrounding the system, itulah kita panggil surrounding. Okay, so surrounding other component of of the measurement apparatus that serve either provide heat to the system or absorb heat to from the system. Kiranya combustion, kiranya kamu bakar sampah. Okay, so di, ini api eh. Okay, so this is fire. Okay, so kamu bakar sampah and then tepi ni... Uh, Ruang lah, environment. Okay, so environment, kita panggil dia sebagai surrounding lah. Okay, and then HCl dengan NaOH, uh, so mungkin surrounding dia adalah beaker. Okay, bekas. Bekan kamu letak HCl dengan NaOH tu di dalam uh, beaker. So, kita panggil dia, uh, beaker ni maybe the surrounding. Or, dia ada another solution di dalam ni. Contoh, ada, ada solution lain dalam ni. Dalam HCN dan NaOH tu, so itu pun boleh dijadikan sebagai surrounding. Okay. Alright, so don't think too much. If you know the reaction, the system, then sekeliling dia tu adalah surrounding. Okay, and then next one, endothermic. Okay, so what is endothermic reaction? Endothermic reaction is a reaction that will absorb heat from the surrounding and causes the environment surrounding to cool down. Okay, so the important point here adalah endothermic reaction adalah satu reaction yang absorb heat from the surrounding. Okay, so ingat yang ni ya. Endo 
absorb heat from the surrounding. Maksudnya, sera, uh, apa, sistem itulah yang absorb heat from surrounding. Okay, since the system absorb heat from the surrounding, it will cause the environment or surrounding to cool down. Logik lah. Sebab dia absorb heat dari surrounding. So, kamu bayangkan, kamu adalah sistem. Contohlah. And you have the ability to absorb heat from the surrounding. So, maksudnya surrounding kamu tu, udara kamu tu, kamu boleh kami, kamu boleh uh, absorb tu maksudnya menyerap udara panas. So, maksudnya udara sekeliling kamu tu dah jadi sejuk lah. Okay, so itu contoh dia. Tapi, for this one, okay, saya bagi tahu awal-awal lah. Eh. Uh, this one, not all the time your surrounding will cool down. Color reaction tu adalah endothermic. Okay, not all the time. Okay, tak semua keadaan. Ada keadaan uh, endothermic reaction ni, dia absorb heat but the surrounding tak sejuk pun. Okay, uh, so itu antara uh, dia punya ni lah. Okay, tips dia. Okay, so tak ingat lah endothermic absorb heat from surrounding. Okay, and then this one I would like to relate back to our experiment. Kadang-kadang kamu perasan tak? If you do experiment dalam lab kan, when you mix dua benda ke apa benda ke, and then when you touch the beaker or the test tube, kamu rasa eh sejuk lah miss. Sedangkan kita tak masukkan benda tu dalam peti sejuk pun kan. So, we, we just mix two reaction and then suddenly the solution jadi sejuk. Okay, uh, it shows that reaction itu adalah endothermic reaction. Okay, ada juga reaction yang when you tambah, tiba-tiba bekas tu jadi warm. Okay, kamu tak kamu tak uh, heat pun solution tu. Uh. So, itu maksudnya the opposite lah, the exothermic yang kita akan belajar nanti. Okay, and the next one, the next point is endothermic reaction with yield product that have higher energy than return. This causes the enthalpy change of endothermic reaction to be positive. Okay, so this one, I hope that you are not confused dah. Okay, so the second point is very easy. Ini just nak emphasize kan saya cakap dekat kamu, enthalpy change can be calculated as enthalpy product minus enthalpy, summation of enthalpy return. Okay, and then since uh, delta H untuk endothermic adalah positif. Sebab apa positif? Sebab dia punya nilai enthalpy product lebih tinggi daripada reactant. Okay, ataupun you can see in this diagram here lah. So, enthalpy product is somewhere over here. While enthalpy reactant is just here. Okay, so uh, enthalpy product lebih tinggi daripada reactant. So, bila tolak dapat positif. Okay. And the example of endothermic reaction adalah melting process of ice cube. Okay, so kira kamu ada ice cube. Kamu letak ice cube tu atas meja. And kamu akan nampak lah ice cube tu suddenly, bukan suddenly lah. Slowly, it will macam melt. Okay, tapi actually the process behind ni adalah endothermic process. Okay, banyak lagi contoh lain. Okay, so macam kamu nak memasak. Kamu nak goreng telur. Okay. So, bila kamu goreng telur tu, what happen adalah endothermic reaction. So, kita kena tengok kenapa endothermic. Okay. So, kita tengok ais ni dulu. Okay. So, imagine you have a cube of ice. Okay. And then, uh, untuk ais ni melt, obviously we know that heat is absorbed lah. Sebab tu dia boleh melt kan. Okay. So, bila heat is absorbed, you can see the arrow. So, now, uh, arrow tu, heat tu going into the system ok ha, so saya dah guna perkataan sistem so siapa sistem sini ok so ice ni adalah sistem keliling ni ok so ini adalah surrounding ok in order for ice to melt ice need to absorb heat ok ice ni kena absorb heat so ice nak absorb heat dia nak ambil heat dari mana so this ice will absorb heat from surrounding Okay, so they akan absorb uh, heat from surrounding and then ice ni melt lah. So, tips dia, nanti endo or exo, kena fikir for the reaction to occur, kita perlu absorb heat ke release heat. Okay, so in this case, absorb heat from surrounding. So, maksudnya melting of ice adalah endothermic. Okay, and then you can imagine another thing adalah kamu masak telur, kamu goreng telur. Kamu goreng telur atas pan kamu kan. 
So uh, what happen adalah kamu se- apa your pan tu ataupun telur tu akan absorb heat from the stove. Okay daripada api dari dekat stove tu. So that's why cooking an egg is endothermic process. Okay, and then this is energy profile diagram. Again, you should be able to draw this diagram and label all the things yang ada dalam ni. Okay, and then ini pun sama juga. The same explanation as above. Okay, enthalpy of product is greater than enthalpy of reactant. Okay, so I think that is for endothermic. So next, let us move to exothermic. Okay, so endo and exo opposite lah. Okay, if endo absorb heat that's mean exo is a reaction that release heat in the form of light in the form of heat or light okay so exothermic reaction adalah reaction yang release heat okay so sekarang dia release dari mana okay so release heat and causes the temperature of the surrounding to rise so kiranya sekarang sistem release heat to surrounding Okay, so that is exothermic. Sistem yang akan release heat kepada surrounding. So, kalau sistem release heat to surrounding, kamu boleh bayangkan lah. Oh, that's why the surrounding akan, right, temperature dia akan meningkat. So, contoh macam kamu lah. Contoh kamu, kamu ada ability untuk release heat to the surrounding. So, maksudnya surrounding kamu tu akan jadi panas. Okay, alright. So, energy is released in exothermic reaction because the total energy of product is less than the total energy of reactant. Okay, so uh, kenapa energy release datang mana? Okay, sebab energy release tu disebabkan kan entropy product lebih rendah daripada entropy reactant. So, kalau kita tengok dalam graph, over here is entropy product, sini entropy reactant. Okay, so... Reactant asal energy banyak tapi bila reactant dah hasilkan produk Produk ni yang tapi dia sikit je. That's why dia release heat. Okay. Alright. And then uh, kalau kita nak calculate delta H macam biasalah. We need to take enthalpy of product minus summation of enthalpy reactant. Since product is smaller than reactant then we should get delta H negative. Okay. Right. Then next kita nak explain example of exothermic reaction. Okay. So the easiest example adalah combustion. Okay, combustion, pembakaran. Imagine kamu bakar kayu ke, bakar sampah ke, bakarlah apa pun. Okay, so bila kamu bakar, apa yang terjadi adalah heat is released to the surrounding. Okay, so this fire here, fire ni adalah sistem eh sekarang. So, this uh, pembakaran ni, combustion ni adalah sistem. So, again, yang dekat luar ni adalah surrounding. Okay, keliling dia. Right, so kalau kamu bakar sampah, kamu cuba pergi duduk tepi sebelah bakar sampah tu, kamu rasa sejuk ke? Obviously, kamu akan rasa panas lah. Kalau siapa rasa sejuk tu, pelik lah. Okay, so kamu akan rasa panas. Sebab apa kamu rasa panas? Because the combustion reaction tu, sistem tu, release heat to the surrounding. So, you can see the arrow here, heat is released to the surrounding. Okay, so... Uh, Ingatlah, combustion release heat to surrounding. Since they release heat to surrounding, itu adalah ciri-ciri exothermic reaction. Dan itulah yang menyebabkan kamu rasa panas bila kamu duduk di tepi api. Okay. Alright, so um, endo and exothermic reaction ni somehow menarik. Sebab it's related to our daily life. Sangat related. Okay, sama ada kita tahu ataupun kita tak tahu. Okay. Alright, so I think I will stop here. Any question, you can ask me later. Thank you. Bye.